Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Lawrence. Today we're celebrating the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider this evening is Father Chung Sun, assisted by Deacon Charles. Please stand and let us join together in singing number 590, number 590, Christ Be Our Light. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With How about them strokes? <laughs> you know I was going to say it. You know I was going to say it. You don't even have to ask. But more importantly, today we know that God chose us and want us to go back and give everything back to God because we belong for God. And uh, most beautifully, when I, at the beginning of Mass, someone asked me, Father, because I was going to get my prayer, my saints cards from my friends, they asked me, Father, you're going the wrong way. Mass is this way. <laughs> and they say, they say, no worry, Father, we wait for you. They say, you, you have to because Mass doesn't start without the priest. <laughs> Can you have a Mass with a, without a priest? No, that's why I need a lot of my little friends here. God calling you be priest, you need to answer God's call. We need the priest, we need the Eucharist. Please answer God's call. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sin and so prepare ourselves for the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you sustain us with the word of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is salvation for all who look to you for hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, your word is justice for all who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other, there is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is based on Psalm nineteen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. In God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. 
we give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. And it handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You have an interesting, uh, we've always heard this passage on the Gospel reading on Matthew, but offering to Caesar what is Caesar's and what is to God, God. But I wonder how many times we think about it in our own personal lives and how we deal with things of this nature. With all the things we face throughout our human nature, our living here in this world, and how do we live our lives? You know, at the beginning of the first, uh, the first reading, we talk about uh, Cyrus, I think it is, that he talks about, you know, Cyrus was not really a, a Jew in a sense, but God was still going to use him you're still going to use them, and you see God use people that are not from the Jewish faith for other events in their lives, you know, and uses them to accomplish his will. 
And we see that also in some of the women that you hear in the, in the, gospel, the uh, Old Testament readings. For God doesn't worry about, you know, whether a person is a, uh, a follower of the faith, but the one that seeks God's guidance in their own lives. We find ourselves, again, struggling in this life because we live our lives in this world where we sometimes think of, let's say, our work as mundane, repetitive, long and hard working, all these hours we put in, maybe not receiving some of the rewards we feel we should receive or some of the accolades, whatever the case may be. Or we do the work of you know, going out and shopping for the things we need in our homes. We do the raising of our kids and try to teach them as best we can. And, you know, we just go through all these things and these events and all that. But how many times, my friends, have we thought about everything that we do in this world is always or should always be a prayer to God? I recall many years, many years ago when we were raising our children, my wife said to me, you know, raising our children is a prayer to God. And that's so true. Everything that we do in this life should be a prayer to God. Even when we find times of struggle, distress, and despair, and we have to go through some of the darkness in the world and have to overcome the dark, the seas, the, the torments, and everything that goes on. We have to embrace and know that God is with us on this journey, and it becomes something difficult for us as human beings to recognize God's presence in our lives because we're so focused on the things of this world that it draws us down and away from God. The Roman coin was, was a denarius, was had to be given as a tax, a census tax on every man, woman, and child, and had the image of Caesar on the coin. Now, what's interesting about the passage here in the Gospel reading is that you have, first of all, the Pharisees had just been rejected on something else, and they didn't want to be not recognized by Christ. So they sent their own disciples, people that Jesus might not recognize, to try and entrap him. The funny and the ironic thing about these disciples, when they go out and in their own insidious uh, way, their own uh, malice, they were... They mention the words about Jesus, you know, we know that you're a truthful man and that you teach the way of God and so on and so forth. So even though their intentions were bad, they were speaking the truth about Jesus. They didn't realize that. They were acknowledging who Jesus was, what kind of person he was. And so they try to trap him with this question of do we pay taxes to Caesar? And of course, uh, the whole thing is, you know, if, they, if he says you don't pay the taxes, and of course, the uh, the Herodians, and it's funny because the Pharisees and the Herodians didn't like each other. Pharisees did not even have anything to associate with the Romans, and the Herodians believed in the Roman Empire and so forth. But here they couldn't come together because if he says, no, you don't pay the tax, now the Herodians, who are very much for the Roman Empire, would be able to have something to bring against Jesus and you have him killed. Or if he said, well, you know, you, you pay your taxes and and then you'd have the Pharisees who would say, well, then he's saying you, you don't take care of God. And that's, we don't believe that Caesar's head, which was supposed to be a god, you're offering that as a symbol and, and not acknowledging who God is, is. So Jesus was kind of in a tight spot, but he out, outsmarted them. The interesting thing, that coin that has the Roman emperor on it, the, the, the face of the Roman emperor at that time, we have to understand that the Roman emperor would not be in existence without the grace of God. And so in, in not paying the tax on the Roman coin was, in a sense, you're offering the coin to Caesar because it is he at his, and he was part of God's creation also. So it's just very theologically it gets confusing to understand. But nonetheless, uh, Christ was talking about how we sometimes get so messed up in the world with things of trying to prove that this is better than that or this is right and this is wrong and, this, and so forth. We get so much involved in, that, in passing judgment that we fail to fulfill God's will of just being faithful servants of God in offering our lives constantly for God's presence and glory. 
You know, the word, uh, when we talk about the word of Yahweh, people have said, the theologians have said, you know, when you talk about, when you mention the word Yahweh, it is mentioned as similar as if you're taking a breath in and a breath out. So if I go like this, You hear the word of Yahweh being breathed. We breathe the name of God in and out in all our lives. Every breath we take in, it's a yah, and every breath we take is a way. That happens not by coincidence, my friends. It happens because we are a part of this tremendous, beautiful, living God who has borne us into existence through his love and continues to nourish us in his love and his presence and his mercy. And it makes no difference whether we believe in him or not. His mercy still falls upon each and every soul in this world, regardless of our faith, regardless of our, of our humanity, the, the nature, the, whatever the case, uh, race or creed or whatever. God's grace and mercy falls upon all of us, all, not just us here in these pews, but all out there throughout the world. The difference, the significant difference between them and, and those who are out there is that you and I can be instruments of God's grace in praying for those who need our prayers, those who need the conversion, those who need the experience of God to touch their lives and help them to overcome the difficulties and challenges. You know, we hear the war going on in Ukraine. We hear the war going on in, in Israel and the Gaza Strip, you know. And I can't, no, I don't know how many people here are praying for both sides for the healing of those souls, especially those who are in the middle of the whole violence. Not so much just for the, and even praying for those who are committing these grievous acts. I, I recall one time sitting, at, I said at the, at the, at the, um, I forget the name of the event that we have here. Your father's always had it. Heart of worship. Heart of worship. Thank you, Father. I'm getting old. It's a senior moment. But I recall one time sitting at a table in the dining room eating, and that some, we're talking about at that time the attacks had just taken place on the, on the towers. And everybody was talking around the table, talking about destroying and going on nu nuclear war and just, nu just get rid of all of them and wipe out the world and wipe out this and do this, all this stuff. And when they came and asked me, What's, what do you think, Deacon Charles? I said, well, I haven't heard anybody talk about getting on your knees and praying for God's grace to be fulfilled that the healing will come and that there'll be the, uh, the conversion of hearts and that the souls will come to recognize the evil of their own ways. And, and each and every one of us has to do that in our lives. We are instruments of God's grace in so many ways. We, we just fail to realize how perfect and how tremendously wonderful God gives us this gift of being able to offer our lives to God. Yes, I go out and I work at my work, and I do that because I need the money to be able to support my family, but that's not because I do it. It's because God has given me that grace and the ability and the blessing to have a job so I can feed my family. But it's more important than that. I do the work not so that I can receive something, but so that I can offer something to my brothers and sisters. I work in IT. I don't work in IT to fix computers. and all. I work there so that my, those who work with their computers can be productive and be able to support their families, and they can then work on to work, be productive with us. We support each other in everything that we think, say, and do. Yes, Caesar is there in our lives. The world is there in our lives. But we are also given that opportunity to turn that around, not just only for, to offer the stuff for the world, but turn what's in the world and turn it to a gift to God through our prayers. I always like saying this, one of the biggest challenges for every one of us is how do I make my driving in Houston a prayer to God? <laughs> Think about it. That's the most difficult prayer to offer. But it can be done. It's very serious. You can do it. And so I challenge each and every one of you to, to offer your prayer to God in the form of your driving. Your driving is a prayer to God. So how do you drive? How do you respond? How do you offer your, what you think is your spot on the road to someone else? 
Or how about when you need a spot? I mean, there's all kinds of ways we can use this in prayer. I know I do this in work when I'm driving, I'm praying and asking God to help me to get there safely, to help. If I see somebody racing by me, I don't curse and swear and I don't think anything negative. I think God help that person to get to wherever they need to go safely and, and that nobody else gets hurt. I, I just don't see a way, I don't see any reason to curse at them and swear at them. I just offer God's grace to them. In the same way when we're in the grocery store or sometimes you're waiting on the phone trying to get support, right? And what do you hear? These little voices coming on that's not a live person. We're ready to just about slam that phone, aren't we? And I hate it. But that's where you need to gain patience and turn that into a gift to God. All these things that, that cause us to fall away from God, all these events that cause us to draw our attraction or our focus on God can easily be turned to be a focus on God in, in offering if we choose to do so. So the Pharisees in talking about this, what belongs to Jesus and what belongs to God, it's all the same thing. Everything in the world belongs to God. There's not a single thing in this world that does not belong to him. And we are the recipients of this tremendous gift of everything we receive from the air we breathe to call out his name, to the opportunity, the words we speak, and the love and compassion we share for others, even when we don't agree with them, even when we feel like they need to be annihilated or whatever the case may be. Yes, those crimes are hideous. They're hideous. But I need to serve God in a, in a holy way, in a way that serves him, that my whole life serves God and not my own will. So as we come to receive again Jesus and this precious gift of his precious body and blood in the Eucharist, and we come and offer our sacrifice upon this altar, let us ask God to help us to gain the wisdom and the knowledge to see the world not in, in our terms, but see the world as God sees going on. Do not let us be focused and be misguided by the, what we hear in the media and everything else. But allow God's Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts and our words so that we can be instruments of peace, instruments of conversion for not only ourselves, but for those around us. And that's what we come to ask here at this altar. And not just for my own fulfillment, not just to take care of myself, because human nature always thinks about what's in it for me. We need to turn that around. Everything I do is not for me. I am not the center of the world. I am an instrument. I am a speck of sand in the world to be trampled on if that is what it needs to be done or to be used to plant, whatever it is. But I'm God's instrument in this world and let us also be instruments of God's grace to all those we meet upon our journey. And my, may God bless us on this journey. Let us profess the God that calls us to give us all to himself and live for him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christian, lives, Christian lives in two dimensions. Citizens of the city of God, citizens of the world, let us pray for the needs of this world with our hearts set on the endless kingdom that is to come. For Pope Francis, our leading missionary, and all those who bravely proclaim the gospel in foreign lands, may their hearts remain ablaze with the love for Christ and for all of humanity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That rich and poor alike may not make excuses to evade the call to the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayers. prayers. For families worldwide, the domestic church, may they be ignited with the missionary spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayers. prayers. For those who provide ministry of care to shut-ins and for strength and healing for all confined to their homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. That the sick and those listed in the book of the sick will make full recovery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. That those who have died will be with the Lord forever, especially Dorothy Fakak, wife of Deacon Marvin Fakak, Amaram Atmaram Hiraram, son of Veronique Hiraram, Tel Perez, husband of Boots Perez, Jim Tomlinson, husband of Marlisa Tomlinson, and stepfather to Alexis and Natalia Ramirez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions and the intentions of this Mass, the soul of Deborah Evans. We pray to the Lord. Lord, yeah. Pray for all those who suffer with chronic illness, with cancer, and addiction, with mental or spiritual affliction. Strengthen them, Lord, through this time. Help them offer themselves for your greater glory and for their families and those in need. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the souls that have no families, no friends to pray for them. We pray in a special way for our life chain this weekend that you continue to bring healing and give witness to the love of life. We pray to the Lord. Bend your ears to the prayers of your people. O oh God of tender mercy, bring comfort to all who are in need and inspire us to work tirelessly for justice and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection is for the propagation of the faith. As our gifts are prepared on the altar, let us join together in singing number 696. Ubi Caritas.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mystery we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord, through him the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May your voice, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we, as we acclaim. Praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man in your own image and entrust the whole world to his care. 
so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through the disobedience he has lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He share our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again from for us. He sent the Holy Spirit for you, Father, from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his works in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, we pray that this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which, we, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord, my God. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord, my God, The mystery of As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice which you yourself has provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit 
they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Italo, his assistant bishop, and the whole order of bishop, all the clergy, those who take part in this offerings, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, your deacon. Thank you. May this mingling in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receives it. Thank you. Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world. Free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. 
Keep me always faithful to your commandment and never be, let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. As we come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ, let us join together in singing number 944, number 944.
Our second communion song is number 696, Ubi Caritas, number 6, 685. How can I keep from singing? participation in heavenly things we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord Amen. so 
Hello, on our announcements, you're invited to celebrate St. Jude with our African Catholic community. There's a retreat next Saturday during the day and a reception after the 5 p.m. Mass. You can meet them today at the hospitality desk after this Mass for all the information. During this National Eucharistic Revival, we are excited to welcome to our parish Dr. John Bergsma. You've heard about this in the last week or two. You can register to hear this popular author and speaker at the Ave Maria Center on Friday, November 3rd and Saturday, November 4th. Now you don't register over there at the Ave Maria Center, register online. So look in your bulletin for information about that. Also out on the plaza, you can buy a raffle ticket from Incarnate Word Academy students and enter a drawing for a chance to win some big bucks. I won't say how many, but pretty good sized bucks. And that's about it. All right, I really hope you guys start register and come to Dr. Bergsma. He's a great speaker uh, nationally. Uh, learn about the sacred scripture. So please come and uh, enjoy and uh, be filled with the word of God and being uh, more open to hearing his word through his teaching. So please come and uh, all my hunter friends, if you like out there this coming Saturday after the 8 a.m. mass, I'm doing a blessing for fishermen and hunter. So if you are one, come if you like at the end of mass, I'm doing a special blessing for you all. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And as we go forth this evening, join together with us in singing number 607. Sing a new song, number 607. <laughs> 